is a graduate level class. Why do I need to take them? What is the difference between a grad level class and an undergrad level course? How do I even go about choosing these things? And finally, how to balance taking classes with doing your all important research. Hello PhD friends and welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a while and I hope you all had a lovely winter break and are ready to get stuck into this new semester of PhD fun. If you are new here, my name is Ellie and I talk a lot about graduate school life as an international student studying abroad from England in the USA. And today we are going to be talking all about classes, graduate level classes 101. So this is actually quite a lot to cover in one video, but I remember being very confused about the whole concept of classes when I first moved to the States because we don't really do that. I was like, why do I have to take this? So this is why I wanted to make this video because I've been taking classes now for a year and a half. I'm probably going to continue taking classes, but that doesn't stop me making research progress. These are some of the tips and tricks that I have picked up along the way on how to get the most out of your classes and make sure you don't compromise your research. So the first question that I want to cover is what on earth is a graduate level class and why is it any different from an undergraduate level class? Sometimes when you look on your class roster, they might also be co-taught with undergraduate level classes. So this often means that it's the same kind of core content, but maybe they're there's extra assignments or an extra chapter or something that you would have to do to satisfy the graduate level requirement for that course. Sometimes they can be very, very similar and sometimes they can be co-taught or other times they might just be pure graduate level classes. They are often designed to deepen your knowledge or understanding of a specific subject or just your overall program as a whole. So for example, if you're taking chemical engineering, there would definitely be some core classes in there that are designed to help you understand chemical engineering as a subject. This all ties into becoming an expert in your field of research. What they also do, I found, is it gives you an opportunity to ask questions and read literature and actually learn this stuff but learn this stuff and keeps you accountable for it. So you have to do the assignment or you have to learn this stuff because otherwise you're gonna fail the class or you have to read this number of papers because you've got a journal club next week. And I find that that kind of thing is really hard to keep yourself accountable for if you're doing it independently. But if it's part of a class, that's extra accountability needed. It also helps you It also helps you learn a lot of new skills that might support you in your research. For example, you could take a stats class. You might not be doing a PhD in statistics, but those statistics will be very useful for maybe later down in your project when you have to do statistical analysis or you might be taking a Python class. Your PhD might not be in computer things, but taking the Python class might help you code something else later on down the line in your project. That, in general, is what a graduate level class is supposed to be all about. So all of that is great and you've been told that you need to take these graduate level classes and you're like, fine, I guess I will. But how on earth do you choose them? Some PhD programs will tell you exactly what classes you're supposed to be taking and when exactly you need to take them. So you really don't have to do much thinking. Some PhD programs are a little bit more flexible and might allow you to take different classes up to you, like of your choice, to satisfy different requirements. So I would say that number one, when you're thinking about classes, is check your program's requirements. And not everyone's always going to tell you whether you're supposed to take a class or not. So check your program requirements. If it's not super obvious, like reach out to your DGS or your different professors and stuff and just ask someone. Just don't be afraid to ask because it's so much better to ask and know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, like sitting there later and stressing because you they've done the wrong thing or I don't know. So ask what the requirements are. Once you've found those requirements and let's say that you're doing something a little bit more flexible, I would uh, recommend discussing it with your PI. Um, I think that classes that I find classes very exciting and I like get very carried away and I'm like, oh my goodness, I wanna take this and I'm gonna be an expert in this and I could learn about this type of microscope, but it might not be super relevant for me. So chat to your PI and think about what classes are gonna be more relevant for your project, your particular project at that point and a vague timeline. Because at the end of the day, your job um, is to do the research and to get your degree. Make sure that it's more of a collaborative conversation between you and your PI and you can both come up with like some nice conclusions as to, oh, I think you should take this class now because X, Y, Z, and then you can take that next semester. So kind of drawing up a timeline with your PI. However, I would say don't go to your PI and be like, what classes should I take? I would always say have a, have a rough idea of the classes that might be relevant when you go and have that discussion. So the other thing that you need to do is also check what level the class is. Is it an undergraduate level class? Is it a graduate level class? And if it is an undergraduate level class, is there a graduate graduate level component. You don't want to be taking undergraduate level classes and finding that they don't count towards your final PhD because that would suck. Another thing is the credits. Is it one credit? Is it three credits? You need to know how many credits you need to be uh, fulfilling each semester. So just making sure that you're within the requirements on that as well. 
checking the syllabus. So I found that not a lot of syllabuses, syllabi were available to me on this like public roster website. So you kind of have to wait until you're enrolled in the class on that first day to get the syllabus. So what I did, I enrolled in a lot of classes. So I enrolled in maybe three or four at the beginning of each semester. I went to the first one of those classes. I looked at the syllabus. I looked at what we'd be covering. And then I decided of those, which is the most relevant one or two that I should be taking. So now that you've chosen your classes and you're all excited for the next semester, the next thing that's really important to cover is how you get the most out of these classes. How do you actually learn what you need to learn? Number one is note taking. So I use my iPad for this. And what I would do is I would download the lecture note. I'm gonna sound like, I'm gonna say like I'm talking the obvious stuff, but this is a whole new thing for me. So I'm sorry. Um, and then I would use that in class as a guide and I would annotate that in GoodNotes. Um, I would highlight everything important that they were saying and I would add extra notes. I would also color code this. So maybe something I wasn't quite sure about, I'd put in red pen, questions I'd put in red pen or just general notes I'd put in black or blue pen or whatever. I would say that one of the mo main things that graduate school has taught me is how to become more comfortable asking questions in front of a big crowd. I know it can seem the most intimidating, but I underwent a real mindset shift and started seeing it as not a scary thing, but my literal job, I am paid to learn this and get this PhD. So I'm going to do my job. And if that means asking questions and people being like, oh, she's asking another question, then to be honest, I don't really care. As long as I'm understanding this and I'm getting enough to write down on my little notebook so that I can pass this and just like move on with my life then that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I would say practicing this in like a small scale class, maybe you have a compulsory class with your cohort that's like not that big. That's a really great setting to start asking questions. Then you can build yourself up to asking questions in class. Do not underestimate the power of asking questions. You know when the professor's at the front and they're like, does anyone have any questions? If you've got a question, like honestly, probably someone else does as well, or they haven't thought that that's something that they were confused about and needed to answer. So the other thing that I would say off that little tangent is making use of office hours and your peers. I cannot tell you the number of times I've had to go to office hours and be like, I literally just don't understand understand this, I'm so sorry. They can be absolute lifesavers. <sighs> But I would also argue that one of the most important things about being in grad school and taking classes is balancing it with your research. This is a huge challenge. And one of the questions that I get asked the most, what do you prioritize? Especially when you're in your first year and you're trying to make a good impression on your PI or your supervisor, or perhaps you're on a rotational program. So you're trying to get the most out of those rotations and also make a good impression, but also pass your classes. This was something that I faced. I did, I faced it last year because my whole entire first year was not only classwork, but it was also made up of rotations. So I didn't actually have a permanent lab home yet. So that meant impressing PIs, doing work, and also trying to pass these classes so I didn't get kicked out. If you fail your classes, that's kind of it. Like you cannot fail your classes. I know there's like opportunities to resit, but you really need to try and not fail your classes. That's A, not gonna look good for your PI, and it's also B, could get you kicked out of grad school, in which case there's no use doing any work in your lab because you're not gonna be there to do it. So it's a horrible, harsh reality, but if you fail your classes, then you're out. Prioritize your classes. 100%. What I did is obviously I would attend class, but I would also do most of the work for that class. So writing up my notes, doing my revision, doing my assignments in the lab office. So I'm still in the lab. I'm still present. I'm still like taking in the lab environment and seeing whether it's a lab I want to join, or if you've already joined the lab, you're still there. Like you're interacting with people you're still in the lab, but you're doing your assignments and stuff there rather than going home or going to the library. Then what I did is I tended to plan less lab work in a day. So previously, maybe I do two or three experiments in a day. And then there would be bits of reading and stuff during the incubation periods. When I'm in a heavy class period, I would tend to plan maybe one experiment that I'm going to do a day or maybe two experiments that I'm going to do a week. And I would be like, that's what I'm going to do this week. And then the rest of the time is going to be spent in class and studying. I would then use my weekends to catch up on any classwork or anything. Communicate with your advisor. What you do not want to happen is them to have all of these unrealistic expectations of you when you're taking all of these classes. I would say communicate with them, tell them how many classes you're going to be taking, what that workload is, and then what they can expect from you. That's what I tended to do. And I felt personally like I was able to balance classwork and lab work pretty well. It was very stressful and it wasn't easy, but just by planning less lab work it tended to be fine for me. So that brings us to the end of another YouTube video, Little Classes 101. I hope that that has been helpful and given you a little bit of an idea of what to expect from graduate level classes and how you might start to navigate that space in your first year of your PhD. It is very stressful and you are all doing a great job, I'm sure. So I hope this has been vaguely helpful. If you have any other comments or thoughts, please pop them down below and I'll see you guys next week for another PhD filled video. If you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe to this video if you wanna see more content like this on your feet and I'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Ow! Bye.